Today, I'm gonna to be making birra tacos that'll be sure to tantalize your taste buds. So when I first encountered birra tacos a few years ago, I was instantly hooked. The combination of unique ingredients was absolutely delicious, and I knew that I had to try and recreate the same recipe. I've done a lot of research, and I've simplified it enough that any of you guys will be able to reproduce the same delicious recipe at home. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna begin by making the dry rub. It's really simple. It all gets started with two teaspoons of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm also gonna use a half a teaspoon of Lowry seasoning salt, a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of cumin, and a fourth of a teaspoon of ground chipotle chili. And then you just wanna blend that all together with a fork, make sure it's mixed up nicely. Today, I'm using a three pound Wagyu chuck roast that was raised right here in Minnesota. You don't wanna over season it. This rub, this smells absolutely delicious. We've got our ragu chuck roast on the smoker at 225. The next step is to go ahead and make the birra consomme. This is where all the flavor concentrations come together. So make sure that you're using quality ingredients and that you're really paying attention to the steps here. All right, so you're gonna need a couple of dried peppers to make the braid. The first is an ancho pepper, and the second is a New Mexico pepper or a gohila pepper. And you'll need three of those. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the pepper seeds. And the easiest way to do this is just cut the tops off. Cut them open and scrape out the seeds. So we're all set up here for success. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a tablespoon of butter just down into the pan here. We're gonna let that melt. And I've got a large pan here, enough that's gonna be able to accommodate about four cups of stock. And then to our melted butter, I'm gonna go ahead and add one whole white onion. We're just gonna sweat this down until it becomes translucent. I'm gonna go ahead and add our garlic. I've got one head of garlic that I've just minced up really finely here. Just gonna get that into our pot. Cook it for about a minute or two until starts and smells nice and fragrant. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get one cup of our beef broth down in here. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and then I'm gonna go ahead and get our tomatoes and our dried chilies in here. I've got four Roma tomatoes here that I've just deseeded and chopped up. And then I've just got our chilies that we're gonna get in. And you might need to add a little bit more of your broth here. So we're at about two cups of broth right now. And what we're trying to do is just to rehydrate these peppers. Everything's all mixed in and the peppers are starting to rehydrate. We're gonna let it hang out just like this for about 15 minutes. Have they invented Smell-O-Vision yet? My house smells absolutely amazing. This is really starting to get me excited for tacos. But I'm gonna go ahead and transfer our mix here into a bowl and use an immersion blender to blend that all down and make a sauce with a smooth consistency. Go ahead and add the remaining beef broth back to your pot here. And then you just wanna go ahead and add your puree, puree back into the pot. And now we're gonna add a few spices here to really amp up the flavor of things. The first thing that I'm gonna add here are six whole cloves, right? One whole stick of cinnamon. And you can probably see what's coming here. Right? Once our beef reaches an internal temperature of 171 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and put our beef and our braise together, seal it up tight and put it back on our smoker, right? And then we're gonna cook it till that beef just falls apart in our hands. And it's gonna be infused with all of the flavors that we've taken so much time to build here. It's gonna be great. I'm getting excited. I'm gonna go check our beef, see how that's coming along. Before I forget, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a couple of bay leaves here to a pot. And you just wanna bring this up to a simmer, maybe let it simmer for about 15 minutes. You may be at a point where your beef isn't quite ready to go into the braise yet. And that's totally fine. Just put a lid on this, let it hang on on your stove. And when the beef's ready to put in there, we'll get this, we'll get it all mixed together and we'll make it happen. Man, I wish you all could smell this. It looks absolutely delicious. It smells great as it is, but we've got to get it into that braise and get it up to a temperature of 205 degrees. Use a probe to help you nail the perfect tenderness and temperature every time. Our chuck roast has finally hit an internal temperature. This one finished at about 205. Your mileage is gonna vary. A Wagyu chuck roast, I expected this to finish a little higher as there's a higher concentration of fat than you might find at a commodity store or your local butcher. This is perhaps the most crucial part of the entire cook. What we do not wanna do is rip into this right away. Cover it back up with foil, wrap it up in a blanket, or put it in a cooler and let it hang out for about an hour or two. And you'll thank yourself when it comes time to put this thing together. It's been a long cook, but the payoff is gonna be worth it. Time to get that truck roast out of our braise. And if we did our job right today, it should fall apart. No utensils needed. Oh man, this smells absolutely delicious. The smoke flavor in there, man, that just looks absolutely perfect. Mm, nailed it. That is good, good, good. This is just gonna make some killer, killer tacos. Get these pieces of chuck back into the braise. Now pull out our skillet and we'll make some beer tacos. I've got a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese here and I've got corn tortilla shells here. 
no flour allowed for these tacos. Go ahead and put one of these bad boys together. First thing you want to do is soak your corn tortilla in that fat on the top of the beer there. And go ahead and get that into your hot skillet. And on one half, you want to put a little cheese. And on the other half, we want to get a little of our beef here and just fold her over like a little quesadilla. Just gonna go ahead and flip it over and go ahead and get our first quesadilla down there. I'm gonna fry up a few more of these. We'll get them plated up here. But I wanted to take a minute to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. It was a marathon of a cook, but I can guarantee you it's 100% gonna be worth it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on what I'm gonna be cooking up next time. And while we're finishing up this beer, be sure to check out some other fit grilled flavors. The Coney Island, or the burger. It's time to finish plating the beer up. It's an absolute must that you serve this with a of the gravy, then garnish with a little bit of white onion. Of course, a little sprinkle of cilantro. Boom. And there you have it, case of beer. That looks absolutely delicious and I can't wait to dig in. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.